Hi, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and today we can talk about working with test object by creating a parameterized test object in Catalan Studio. Well, we have already discussed about something called as a dynamic objects and working with dynamic objects in Catalan Studio and today we can talk about something called as test object and creating this test object by parameterizing this te test objects which is kind of new and we have little bit covered about that in dynamic object but it's not really what it is and let's quickly see what is this parameterized as all that is all about and how it's differentiating itself with the dynamic objects all right so let's get started parameterized test objects catalan studio provides the user with the ability to handle the dynamic objects by supporting a way to parameterize the test object users can leverage this approach to control the objects dynamically there are two ways of parameterizing these objects. One is by adding additional properties to existing object in the object repo. And the next one is creating our own test object with the property or set of properties. So we can do this in two way of parameterization. So what is this adding additional properties to the existing object in object repo? If you recall in our previous video of this course, we were discussing about something called as dynamic objects. We were doing pretty much exactly like that, like we were trying to use the existing object, we were finding the test object and then we were modifying it, but we were actually setting a few dynamic value in that with the existing object type. But here, as you can see in the code below, we have found the object using the find test object method, but we are creating an all new object's name and its object value in it, and then we are passing the value within the set text method. So this is how we can perform the operation of adding an additional property to the existing objects in the object repo. So basically what it says is the object must exist in the object repository of the Catalan Studio. And we can play around with the existing object which is available in the Catalan Studio object repo. And the next one is creating our own object type with a single property. As you can see here, I am creating a test object in the Catalan Studio using a package which is available called as com.kms.catalan.core.testobject package where you have a class called test object class and you can see that I have created an instance of the test object class and I have given a name like custom object and then I'm adding a property to the test object class something like add property and I have given the name of the property and the condition like condition type dot equals or condition type dot contains or something like that you can give different kinds of condition basically it's an enum and then you are passing the value for that particular property and finally we're setting the text into that particular property that we just created so basically this is a completely custom object that we have created and the differentiation between the first one and this one is we don't really have to have an object within the object repository whereas in our earlier case we should have the object in the object repository that's the differentiation and what if an object has to be identified using multiple different properties then we have to write this kind of code basically what it does is we have to create a list of test object properties and then we have to create an array list and then we have to add the properties like name and xpath and then we have to play around with that particular property and you can see that I have just found the particular property and then I'm performing the operation in there using the set properties method. So this is another way of working with that particular property. And finally, we can also get an object property from the particular object during runtime. And this is also very, very cool because for instance, if you want to verify if the particular property is kind of disabled or we have to verify if the particular object is disabled or enabled during runtime, we can use this method. There's something called as get properties of a particular object and you can just get all the properties of that particular UI object and then you can just loop around the particular properties using the for each loop and then you can verify whether the name of the property or the value of the property that you're looking for is actually is what you're expecting it. So these are the different kinds of way that we can work around with the properties in Catalan Studio. So we are going to deal with few of them in this video and we're going to deal with rest of them in the next video and you can understand how things are working. All right, so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Catalan Studio.
All right, so this is the same Catalan Studio project which we are actually working for a pretty long time now. And this particular project is currently available in GitHub Exit Automation repo. So you can just hop around there to the github.com slash exit automation and you can go to the repository and you can see there is something called as Catalan Studio Web UI. So you can just click this and you can see this beta kind of four months ago, but there is a one which is like 26 days ago project. So this is the same project which we are actually working on today right this one so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to work with the parameterizing test object with the existing object in the object repository and also I'm going to set or create a single property object within Catalan studio and see how it works in our next video we'll create a set of objects in a list of test object property and also we'll get an object property value out from that right so let's quickly start working on that the first one, as I said, is going to be the object repository. As you can see here, if I go to the script view, you can see basically what we're doing is we are finding a test object like page execute automation and input initial, or let's go to the first one. We are finding a test object of the input login, and we're also finding the username of a test object, something like this, and then performing the operation. So if you forgot what this particular website is pretty much doing, we can directly go to the exitautomation.com and we can search for something called demo site. So this exit automation demo site is what it's all about in this particular code, basically, right? So what I'm gonna do is like this. I am going to just modify the existing object and then I'm gonna verify if the particular code is actually working or not. So as you can see in this particular code here, it is actually entering the username and the password using the uh, login method. And you can see this login method is actually sitting somewhere over here. And then you can see that the find test object of the page exit automation slash input username is this one. So basically this is directly getting all the value out from an object repository over here. So if I go to the page exit automation and the input as the username here, if I double click that, you can see that this particular object, the UA object is being identified using its tag as uh, input and XPath is this and uh, it has a type as text and the name is username. So what if I remove all of them, right? And let's say if I save it completely and now if I try to run this particular test, if I go to the uh, new test case and if I try to run this particular test, basically what happened is it is not going to enter the username alone because the object is not there. It may either fail or it's not going to enter the value into the particular text box. Let's see what's really going to happen there. All right. Seems like it is failing. The reason is because the username has not entered or it has not found the particular object and it says that unable to set the text admin for this particular username text box which is cool because we have removed all the different identification property it can use to detect that particular UI element. But what I'm gonna do rather using this particular object repository is to set its X path, something like this. I'm just gonna copy like, like cheating it. And I'm gonna create a programmatic way of parameterizing that value. So basically you can relate that how we can do that. And you can see that I'm actually finding a particular test object, something like this and there is a overloaded method for this particular find test object where you can actually set the list of properties that you're looking for. The one is XPath, as I said. So I'm gonna just enter the XPath and the XPath is actually gonna be this one. And you can see there is double code, so maybe I can make this a single code there in the username, all right. And now if you try to run this particular test, this is again going to fail and I can quickly show you why it's going to fail and also I will show you how it can be resolved. So basically we have set a particular property in here like find test object and if we try to run this particular test, you can see that it is going to fail as we expect it to pass. The reason is because it says that the test case is failing because it's unable to set an admin for the test object and the root cause is the web element with ID of this does not have any property to be located by. 
basically we have already set a value for that like find test object and we are trying to perform some operation but for some reason it's not working and the reason is because as you can see here while we're working with an existing object of this kind of type basically we have to identify this particular element with at least one of the particular properties something like detect by either an input or at least uh, it's going to type of a uh, text or something like that so if you set this particular value there and if you save it and now if you try to run this particular test it is going to pass basically you're saying that we are actually using at least one particular property of the object repository and in combination with the object which is available within the custom object that you are passing in so if you try to run this particular test right now you can see that the test is actually going to pass and the reason is very very valid because we are actually using the existing object type and trying to predict perform this operation and you can see that this test has got passed this time right so this is how we can actually perform on work with the existing object type using catalan studio and the next quest is we have to perform the operation of same kind of type with our own object type so instead of using this particular object that we have seen here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create my own object this time so I'm going to use uh, what is called as a test object class. So I'm going to create a uh, property here, something like uh, my test object of uh, a new test object. So this is going to be a class. And then I'm going to give a object ID in this case. So the object ID is basically, uh, let's say, custom object or something like that. And we are then going to add a property for that. So my test object, so basically you can't expect the intelligence to work every time, but still uh, you can see that it is actually going to perform some kind of operation that you're looking for. So let's see, let's save it. And then dot of add property. I mean, sometimes it doesn't work basically. I don't know for what reason it's not working, but it should work uh, in this particular place. I don't know, sometime. Catalan Studio is not actually working as you're expecting and you can see that the conditional or condition type I guess and suddenly it is working the enumerator right now and we can say it's equals and uh, the XPath is going to be pretty much exactly the same XPath that we have right now so I'm just going to copy these guys again and I'm going to paste it over here that's it that's the property and then I'm gonna set the send keys this time so or maybe set text sorry set text of the uh, my test object and the value is gonna be uh, let's say I'm gonna uh, enter some other value uh, custom username something like that instead of trying to mimic how it actually works something like that all right there we go now I think everything is pretty cool and I'm gonna save it again once again and let's try to run this and see how it works there we go do you see that is something called as custom user this time came into the text box so basically it is actually coming from our own test object that we just created so this is not something which is using the object repository at all so basically if i go to this particular input username this time and even if i uncheck this detect by object and let's say i'm going to save it and now if i try to run this particular test it is going to run test without any problem so basically what it does is it is not going to be looking for any one of the objects like detect by there and perform this operation so basically it is going to work solely with the object that you have written in this particular page right so this is the differentiation between working with some of the object using the existing object within the object repository of the catalan studio or creating your own custom object and then performing the operation of whatever you're doing so this is the major difference and the more important thing to note here is the performance is kind of being very very faster with the custom object because it is going to be directly from your code and since catalan studios object repository is going to be like an xml or json file and if your object repository is going to be very very bigger 
there may be a situation where the performance may go slow. And you can also note that there is no dependency of checking one of the detected by checkbox there because your custom object is going to be fully customized by yourself, not depending on some other object type within the object repository. Right? That's it, guys. So this is for today. And tomorrow we're going to talk about something like working with different properties within the custom object and setting the value and also getting a object value out from the object property. So that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.